Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> I love the enthusiasm. You like that? I do. Okay. It's cheerful. It's a beautiful morning, I suppose. <laughs> All right. Perfect. Okay. Today is December 5th, 2023, and our devotional is called A Ruined Life, Part 1. Part 1. Yikes. Love the series. Yeah, I think this one's only a two-part one, though. Okay. Yeah. And then we kind of get back on... Oh. Oh. Oh, we got some oh. special stuff oh. coming up. Oh, people. we just got a sneak peek. Special stuff. Yeah. From Romans 12, 3. For I say, through the grace given to me, to everyone who is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly as God has dealt to each one a measure of faith. Mm -hmm. Romans. Good stuff there. Yeah. All right, you're in Mark 13. You're already there. 5 through 20. 5 through 20. This is great scripture. Yeah. Okay. And Jesus answering them began to say, Take heed lest any man deceive you. Deceive you. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. And when ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars, be ye not troubled, for such things must needs be but the end shall not be yet. For nation shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. And there shall be earthquakes in diverse places and there shall be famines and troubles. These are the beginnings of sorrows. Mm -hmm. But take heed to yourselves for they shall deliver you up to councils and in the synagogues ye shall be beaten and ye shall be brought before rulers mm -hmm. and kings for my sake, for a testimony against them. And the gospel must first be published among all nations. But when they shall lead you and deliver you up, take no thought beforehand what ye shall speak. Neither do ye, neither do ye premeditate, but whatsoever shall be given you in that hour, that speak ye. For it is not ye that speak, but the Holy Ghost. Not, now the brother shall betray the brother to death, and the father the son, and children shall rise up against their parents, and shall cause them to be put to death. And ye shall be hated of all men for my name's sake, but he that shall endure to the, unto the end, the same shall be saved. But when ye shall see the abomination of desolation, spoken of by Daniel the prophet, standing where it ought not, let him that readeth understand. Then let them that be in Judea flee to the mountains, and let him that is on the housetop not go down into the house, neither enter therein to take anything out of his house. And let him that is in the field not turn back again for to take up his garment. But woe to them that are with child, and to them that give suck in those days. And pray ye that your flight be not in the winter. For in those days shall be affliction, such as was not from the beginning of, cre of the creation, which God created unto this time, neither shall be. And except that the Lord had shortened those days, no flesh should be saved, but for the elect's sake, whom he hath chosen, he hath shortened the days. Very relevant. Yeah. To yeah. today. Yep. <clears throat> Lots of people are brought down by the same thing that ruined the life of a young Christian I want to tell you about. For many years after I was baptized, the Lord graciously helped me. I laid hands upon people and they received the Holy Spirit. I thank God that the power has not stopped. I believe in asking God and lifting up holy hands and saying, Father, grant that whoever I place my hands upon will receive the Holy Spirit. Father, glorify thy name. Yes. Yes. People have called me from various places to come and help them when they have had people they wanted to receive the Holy Spirit. Once a group from York, England, sent word that they had 14 people whom they wanted to have baptized in the Holy Spirit. And would I come? 
They all had been saved since the last time I was there. So I went. I have never in all my life met a group of people who were so intoxicated with the Spirit. The power of God was upon them. Right in the midst of them was a young man who had developed such a gift of teaching and leading the people forward with God through the power of the Spirit that they said they did not believe there was another man like him in all of England. I rejoiced with them over this young man. When Jesus began his ministry, he laid hands upon 11 who turned out to be the most marvelous men, yet they were all younger than he. When Paul was brought into the knowledge of the truth, he was a young man. Jesus began the great ministry of worldwide revival with young life. World War I showed, showed, showed us, not shows us, showed us, that no man over 40 years of age was good enough for that war. They had to have young blood that could stand the stress of frost, heat, and all kinds of things. Thought for today, God wants young people filled with the power of God to go into the harvest field because they can stand the stress. Mm, that's a good word. Mm -hmm. Thank you for joining us. See you tomorrow. Part two. <laughs>